But the Paraclete, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your mind, whatsoever I shall have said to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In today's Gospel, we are given the narrative, the account of the fulfillment of our Lord's promise to send the Holy Ghost to his church. Many times since Easter, we have read how our Lord, in saying farewell, always promised his disciples to send them the paraclete, as their comforter and guide, who was absolutely necessary for them, and who would teach them all truth, recalling everything our Lord has told them, and shedding light upon those very same mysteries. It is by the assistance of the Holy Ghost that the Church claims infallibility in its doctrine and teachings, animated by its holy mission for the salvation of souls. On an individual level, you already know how the Holy Ghost remains necessary to everyone through the sacrament of confirmation. That by the sacrament, usually given around this time of year, the Holy Ghost may give the just soul a special strength and fortitude, a greatly needed help to lead a life truly Christian. Following our Lord's command to stay in Jerusalem waiting for the coming of the Holy Ghost, the apostles stayed ten days until the appointed time. What did they do during that time? They prayed and prepared themselves in a holy recollection in the upper room. Take this example of theirs in order to worthily prepare yourself, not just for the sacrament of confirmation, but for any sacrament, really. Worthily dispose your soul by prayer and an attentive recollection to the holiness of what sacrament you are to approach. Do not take holy things lightly. The oration read at the beginning of today's Mass eloquently expresses several truths in a poetic summary. O God, who on this day didst instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost, grant us by the same Spirit to relish what is right and ever to rejoice in his consolation. I wish to focus today not so much on an explanation concerning the Holy Sacrament of Confirmation, but more on him to whom we attribute it, namely, the Holy Ghost. In a certain sense, the Holy Ghost is the person of the Holy Trinity most difficult to understand for us. The Holy Ghost is holy because he is truly God, ghost because he is truly a spirit. The other two divine persons are equally holy and spiritual, but they both have their own proper names. We can only give a general term to describe and name the third divine person, expressing his name as the Holy Ghost. We can only call him this, since we cannot discover a proper or better name to designate the manner of his procession. As taught by the Holy Scriptures, this is by the eternal passive aspiration breathing forth from both the Father and the Son. This procession is nothing but the result of the mutual love of the Father and the Son. And so, all of the external works of God, in which love excels, are attributed to him. We know that the Holy Ghost breatheth where he will, and that he is ever with us with sufficient light and strength for all our needs, primarily our spiritual needs. The Holy Ghost is called the finger of the right hand of God, since he leads us gently through holy thoughts and inspirations. Without any detriment or constraint to our free will, the Holy Ghost coaxes the souls of those striving for holiness by interior lights and voices, through a good conscience, spurring him onwards to a generous sanctity. And the way to grow in sanctity is by greater and more perfect acts of charity, more intense acts of love to God. 
The secret prayer at today at today's mass reads, "Sanctify, we beseech thee, O Lord, the gifts offered, and to cleanse our hearts with the light of the Holy Ghost." Not only does the Holy Ghost come in a special manner to the individual soul, to teach and strengthen it in the faith by the sacrament of confirmation. This is called the internal mission of the Holy Ghost, consisting in sanctifying the individual souls through the sacraments, through his graces, inspirations, holy thoughts, pious affections, in short, by his gifts and fruits. Contrasted to this, there is also something called the outward mission of the Holy Ghost. This consists in his guidance of the Church in her teaching, thus giving the Catholic Church infallibility and authority in teaching to all men as our Lord had commanded. The Holy Ghost also animates and vivifies the Church from within with a divine strength and holiness, just as the soul of man gives life to his body, coordinating its movements and regenerating it through food and sleep. Today can be seen as the birth of the church in the Feast of Pentecost. The apostles, who were its visible teachers and rulers, went forth by the power of the Holy Ghost to begin that unfailing testimony to Christ and his teachings, confirmed by the sanctity of their lives, by their long and arduous journeys to preach across the globe, and by crowning such lives by their glorious martyrdoms. Their lives, from here on out after Pentecost, were an unfailing testimony to Christ and to the veracity and divinity of his teachings. This unfailing witnessing and teaching was to be continued to the end of time by their successors in the hierarchy of the Church through the assistance of the same Holy Ghost. We celebrate today this outward mission of the Holy Ghost, which began on Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost descended, as promised, upon the apostles to enlighten and strengthen their work of teaching and ruling over the whole Church. The communion verse summarizes this. There came suddenly a sound from heaven as of a mighty wind coming, where they were sitting, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking the wonderful works of God. In confirmation of such a portent, we have the miracle related in the epistle. Briefly summarized, descending as tongues of fire, which is a symbol of charity and love, and with the sound of a mighty wind, which is a symbol of the divine omnipotence, the Holy Ghost filled each apostle. As a result, they began to speak with diverse tongues, according as the Holy Ghost gave them to speak. The multitude that was still gathered in Jerusalem for the festivities concurred to see this wonder and was shocked to see and to hear each one of their own native language spoken to them. St. Peter standing above the crowd, rebuked them for having been cooperators in the death of our Lord, and moving them to compunction, brought about the conversion of several thousand men that same morning. St. Peter was a Galilean. Galilee was a mountainous region in northern Israel, despised by the Jews due to their crude manners and unrefined education. But to the amazement of all his hearers, St. Peter spoke to them with an ardor never to be expected from a simple fisherman. He spoke to them with an eloquence not characteristic to an ignorant fisherman. He spoke to them with a fire and zeal that moved them to repentance and obtained their conversion. But the miracle of the diverse tongues was that of being heard and understood perfectly by the language of his particular hearers amidst that vast crowd. The crowd wasn't confused, but amazed. Truth never leads to confusion, but shall be preached to everyone. Notice how St. Peter ran away when our Lord was arrested by the soldiers of the chief priests and the Sanhedrin at the time of his passion. 
Saint Peter, who was so ready to follow and die with our Lord back then, denied knowing Christ to the servants of the chief priests, not once, not twice, but three times. And notice today how Saint Peter takes the stage, leading the apostles because of his primacy, and as head of the church, he stood up and gave that first public sermon to the multitude of the Jews. That change, that strength and fortitude, that inspiration and eloquence were all thanks to the assistance of the Holy Ghost, who changed those once weak and timid apostles into unflinching followers of Christ. And you, when you need help to stand strong in the faith or to defend it, invoke the assistance of the Holy Ghost. Invoke His help also to learn and to understand well the rudiments of the faith. Invoke his help in order to better pray and grow in charity, inflamed by the love of God. There is a beautiful sequence at Mass today, the Veni Sancte Spiritus, in English, Come Holy Ghost. This has been called the Golden Sequence. It is a medieval sequence from around the 12th century. Sangha prayed liturgically for Pentecost and its octave. If you do get a chance, I highly recommend you read a translation to better understand it and pray it that you may increase in your devotion to the Holy Ghost. This wondrous poem starts out, Come, Holy Ghost, and send out from heaven the ray of your light. And it ends in a concise prayer, Give to your faithful who trust in you the sevenfold gift. Give of a virtue's reward. Give salvation's end. Give joy eternal. Not only ought we to develop within us a devotion and reverence to the Holy Ghost, but also to lovingly implore his assistance in our life and sanctification. Start by acquiring a better understanding of his gifts and benefits. Seek above all things to never compromise on truth, for he is the spirit of truth. And for that very reason, purity of doctrine and purity of worship are to be highly treasured and never compromised on. Practice chastity and all of the other virtues, since doing so befits how your soul should house the Holy Ghost within as the temple of God. In conclusion, may our hearts and prayers today resound with the ending words read at today's Mass as found in the Postcommunion. May our hearts be cleansed, O Lord, by the inpouring of the Holy Spirit. May he render them fruitful by watering them with his holy dew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.